Chase Robbins. Um, my question to you is uh, that greening the gap. <laughs> we have heard that it's necessary to go on with uh, agricultural policy towards a more sustainable agriculture. Uh, do you think we have reached this with the Commission's proposals now? No. <laughs> <laughs> I can stop uh, there. <laughs> <laughs> so what should be done? Okay. Um, well, maybe I can uh, reflect also a little bit on Mr. Hurwin's uh, speech from yeah. this morning. Mm -hmm. Uh, I think the first thing we have to realize is that there are certain things we can do with the common agricultural policy and certain things we cannot do with the common agricultural policy. So it's true that there are a lot of issues around sustainability that will have to be tackled outside of this policy. But currently we have a policy at the European level that is targeted at agriculture, at farmers, at land managers. That is a lot of money and that has really driven the situation in a completely wrong direction. So the question is, do we want to have the courage to stand up and change it? And from our perspective, the answer is yes. We can change it. We think that it's possible to incentivize people to do the right thing. And there we think that, uh, also as Mr. Hogevena has said, that it goes in the right direction, but it's far away from what we actually would like to see. Together with IFOAM and other environmental organizations, we have written a vision document that goes beyond the two-pillar structure that goes towards really a basis of strong uh, legislation, strong environmental legislation, and then you pay people to do the right thing. The more you do, the more money you get for it. And that's really our vision that we see. Now, of course, we are in a situation in which the Commission has put a proposal on the table. Uh, that proposal contains certain, certain good elements. The principle of greening uh, is, is one of those good elements. But uh, a lot of the problems are that the content doesn't go far enough. So while the rhetoric has really changed, maybe, and, uh, and people are talking about greening and ab about uh, uh, having more attention for the environment, what we actually see is that we have a big chance of going back. And I have to say this very strongly. We are in an organic conference and people are, you know, <coughs> like, you know, we're boosting energy and confidence in ourselves. But we have to realize that on the other side, there is a very strong lobby and there is a very big push to lower the money that goes to the sectors that we care most about, to actually um, do less than we are currently already doing. And that's a very, very big problem for us. So we think that the greening should be strengthened. We think that we should put a lot of attention to the budget that will go to rural development, rural development that is still the most intelligent part of this policy that is multi-annual, controlled, monitored, that is targeted, that has really a purpose. And we think that is a very big chance that there will be a lot of pressure on this. And we see also that there is a very big chance that we will lose a lot of the people and the systems that are currently producing a lot for the environment and that are really uh, producing with the environment in mind, like high nature value farming systems that we were talking about before. It is true that we won't be able to tackle these systems just through the common agricultural policy. But currently there are very little measures in the common agricultural policy of actually dealing with these systems. So we need more possibilities for them. We need more possibility also for organic farming farmers, more attention, more targeting, and we need to really put, push member states uh, to take their responsibility in that. So I think that we can do much more. The Commission proposal is a first step. It doesn't go far enough, but realize that the pressure to lower what is currently on the table is very, very big, and that we all have a common responsibility to try to change that. Because it's only by uniting and by really pushing very hard on the policy makers that we will be able to make a difference. So with the remaining panelists, I want to focus a little bit more on organic farming. And uh, we are guests here in Denmark. And Denmark presented us as a, a best practice example for organic farming and for the role organic farming can play in policies in, in, the, um, in the society. Uh, so what can Europe learn from Denmark uh, for organic, organic growth? Um, well, I could talk a lot about that. Um, but uh, um, <coughs> actually, I wanted to say something about the innovation uh, partnerships and, and so on. But you could say that that's also something that has been 
has had a long tradition here. And um, yeah, perhaps as Paul maybe is indicating that uh, this is what you want to say, Paul. Was that the que question for you, the other one? So that's good. Yeah, it's, 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 I'll, I'll, I'll happily <laughs> save that for, for Paul. As a scientist, if I may, I'd, I'd rather focus on, on the challenges that we have then still for the organic sector if, I mean, if we sense, after all, that, for instance, from the cap, uh, that organic agriculture is increasingly acknowledged as, as, a, and as, a, as an important approach to solving some of the challenges that, for instance, the, the European Environmental Agency uh, points to. Um, we, uh, we're also facing some challenges in, in the long run, well, in the short run of improving the productivity of organic agriculture, as it, as, uh, it was demonstrated yesterday, the economics is not that uh, good um, in, in all forms of organic agriculture. So we have short-term development needs, but we also have long-term development needs um, in order to, to really be sure that in the long term we are also living up to these expectations. You can call it uh, can keep our integrity in relation to our principles. And Mr. Martinez uh, discussed that uh, yesterday with that, that we should admit there are forms of organic agriculture that are perhaps not developing uh, too much in line with that. So how can we make sure that we um, develop and uh, use innovation in, in that right uh, direction? And that is something that we have already discussed a lot in, in the European technology platform we call TP uh, Organics. So that's, that's my question. What is the role of innovation and of research uh, to reach uh, the same? Yes. And I think we should first of all recognize that organic agriculture to a large extent has been developed through in or by innovative farmers, entrepreneurs, and I know some of them are here today. And um, they are often also interested in having more research done and more research and development, uh, but we need to come back and find a, a better way in general to engage uh, together and secure that, that organic agriculture um, is developed both in a scientific way but also in, in a way that integrates the farmer's needs. Uh, and uh, I, th I just have a few, more, a few uh, main points on that. Um, Several of the topics that we need to develop organic agriculture uh, calls for this better integration with, with the practitioners. I know from experience in, for instance, the IRANET co-organic, where we collaborate between more than 20 European countries, that is, is, it is not state of art all over Europe that public research money, not even in organic agriculture, is really based on a strategic research agenda which is developed with stakeholder involvement. Uh, so I would advise some of you guys to go home and really find the way you can, you can impact on national priority setting, whether it's in the Ministry of Science or the Ministry of Agriculture. So that's, that's one thing. Um, we have, as I said, worked a lot of, uh, with these ideas in TP Organics and, and, uh, and are very ready. So we're very happy to see this new idea of innovation partnerships uh, that comes partly with the CAP. Uh, and I think we could really uh, profit uh, from that if we know, our, uh, know how to, 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 um, uh, to apply for that in, in the right time and, and form. Uh, and just to give an example, perhaps, which is linked again to, to some of the, the, the points that Mr. Martinez raised yesterday, the, the, the increased um, specialization uh, of organic agriculture, which has its own logic, um, own business logic. I don't want to extend on that. You can all have your own opinions on that. But it is a fact that specialization is, is becoming more and more common in, in organic farms from north to south, um, from east to west. I've, when I presented these ideas uh, with TP Organic meetings all over Europe, the people have said, yes, how do, we, how do we increasingly get into a diversification again? And we cannot expect farmers to be both very professional, efficient, and so on, and then be managers of 10 different production lines. So perhaps a new forms of collaboration, we, we talk about matrix farming, how to exploit the, the, the beneficial effects of, of, um, of diverse crop rotations and farm practices where different farmers are specialized farmers and at the same time 
in, uh, be part of a more diversified land use. Uh, that's a very pertinent uh, research and development question, which of course cannot be solved by researchers alone. It's really the question that shows how much we need to, to better forms of, of integrating. The landscape approach to organic agriculture, which was discussed yesterday, is, is another uh, example. Um, so, in order not to take the whole morning, yeah. let me just finish then by, um, <laughs> then one word of caution also, when we talk about innovation partnerships, because what I just mentioned now deliberately, deliberately are also aspects that are kind of difficult and have a, a needs a long-term approach. And what sometimes happens when we discuss um, farm-oriented development and so on, it is sometimes very short-term needs, which are also needed because of the immediate economic uh, competitiveness. But it is not, it, there is a, a, a paradox when we talk about the development of organic agriculture uh, in, in line with our principles, that the long-term research and development goals are not necessarily taken care of by small incremental steps, uh, developing more efficient feeding practice for an organic chicken, for instance. So we also need to, to find ways where these innovation partnerships can address, the, for instance, the topic we called eco-functional intensification, which is about better understanding how to use the organic principles. Thank you. Okay, thanks a lot.